I made the very bold claim when I the first videos went up I made a very very bold claim I said the world's best two-person overlander this is what I have attempted to build so I'm not making the claim well, I kind of am making the claim that this is the world's for me it is the perfect two-person overlander what makes it perfect it, what is perfect for me is not going to be perfect for everybody but my list of boxes to tick is it must have a proper four-wheel drive ability which means um, it's really built well can take punishment when the road gets really really bad it's reliable it stays in one piece it can take a hammering take a knock and you're able one is able to um, put bigger wheels on it and, and beef up the suspension a bit to, to, to make it perfect for a specific um, type of terrain and load and um, then go into extremely remote places with that vehicle and that vehicle be a life support system for long distance travel in extremely remote places and to me that means keeping the vehicle reasonably compact how compact is so difficult for me to judge because other people might say well I've got a real monster thing here and it does exactly and it ticks all the boxes that I have just mentioned I'm saying this is for me the troop carrier is a, run, or is a wonderful platform because it's a van and I uh, Often on the channel, people will say, well, you know, what about this and what about that? And they'll compare it with you know, Lancaster 200 or Nissan Patrol or what about that? Why are you comparing an SUV with a van? <clears throat> because they're not the same. This is not as comfortable as an SUV. It's not as nice to drive as an SUV. It's heavier on fuel than most SUVs, but it's a van. And the van, the fact that it is a van, means that I can do that. For those of you who don't know, that is not a rooftop tent. That is a conversion. The roof has been removed. I climb inside, I pull down the bed, and there is a bed there for me to sleep on. Pack up time, the bed and the tent, the pack up time, I'm not exaggerating when I say 30 seconds. And my tent is in, folded, and stowed. 30. I bet you I can do it faster. So when I arrive at a campsite like this, I don't actually have to think, oh, maybe we need, need to get there because we have to set up camp. I don't need time to set up my camp. I need, and I, again, I'm not exaggerating when I say to set up my camp, I need 90 seconds. And my camp is set up. My, my tent is up. My bed is ready to sleep in. I can have a hot shower ready right there. No setting up none it's there I just turn it on and it's there which which means for an overlander a perfect overlander for me suggests that you see overlanding is not necessarily about okay we're gonna go there and then we're gonna go there and then we're gonna go there and we're gonna spend two days there and four days there and two days there that's not that's not all of it what about the times that and they happen quite a lot let's head north or let's head west okay it's starting to get dark let's look for a campsite with this it's not let's for a, let's look for a campsite man we really need to get there before dark because pitching after dark is a real pain because we're hungry and we don't want to make food after we've arrived and driven through the dark and eventually found somewhere to camp the camp set up so quickly but here's the food thing I've got a little oven on board so and I'd done it today I went and got some lovely pies from a local pie shop they're in the oven right now I don't have to think about my meal pop them in the oven put it on 70 degrees or something to keep them warm it's been on now for I don't know, an hour or so piping hot pies you want to see them? 
Oh, they're piping hot. Piping hot pies. Okay, so they are going to stay in my oven. Stay in my oven until, I don't know, top of six now. Probably eat them, eat them, eat them at seven. See, even that is taken care of. The hot water system, I turned on the hot water, I suppose, uh, about an hour ago. The boiler heats up to temperature uh, and it gets the water up to, I've set it at uh, 70 degrees, which is quite high temperature. It now mixes the water from the tank to the, to the um, shower rows with the water from the boiler so it mixes it and there's a little from the the, the egon uh, water hub there's a, a little dial and you dial the temperature in and it gets the water perfect absolutely perfect and so you have very very little water waste because you're not waiting for the water to heat up again overlanders you're carrying water sometimes the problem isn't range getting enough range out of the vehicle Sometimes it's okay. Well, we can get the range. We, or it's it's a water issue. We're going to be there for for two weeks. We we've got to carry water for two weeks or whatever. And there are two people. We need to carry a lot of water. A. Eh? Well, the water on board this I haven't measured the exact amount, but I guess it is approximately 120 liters in total of water. Okay, which is more than I've ever had in any other. Actually, it was. The Dream Tour I had two tanks, which was a little more than this. This is quite a bit more than my first trip carrier, first and second trip carrier, quite a bit more. For my first trip carrier, I think I had 50, the second one had 75, this 120. So this, the water system that heats the water for the shower is such that there is very, very little wastage of water. And I can have a proper shower, which I'm going to be doing probably in the next half hour, because it's been hot flying today. Very hot in the aeroplane. Um, I can have a proper shower with three, maybe four liters. If I'm fru, if I'm, fr I don't. Need, I have to even be that frugal about it, and I can have a sh proper shower with five liters of water. So I've even paid <coughs> attention to the efficiency of the water system. Now I'm not going to do. Uh, there will be a video that will come out, and I will actually show the detail of all of these different things. There's, uh, there's even a system where I can drain the tank very easily. Or actually, if I just want to water without having to turn on the electrical, because the electric the system is pressurized, but I have another system where I can drain the tank if I think the water is not so great, or and very quickly, or access the water from a point where I don't need the electrics. So if imagine the electrical failure, I would want to be able to access the water easily without the without the hassle of a of a um, electrical system if there was a failure so again i've looked i looked after the redundancy of the system um there's water out the back which is for a little there's a perfect little tap at the back and there's also an extra little receptacle but i can put in a pipe and run a pipe and pump water to another vehicle if i had to decant and pump to another vehicle i can take water from uh, a third source in other words I can have a shower from a bucket of water from say a river which will mix that water with the boiler water and give me a shower but it won't contaminate the water system the water system is completely sealed off there's a valve to stop backflow from the tank and that's part of the DC water hub the Egon um, water hub so I even paid attention to the fact that you if you if you do find water Oh, this is great. Perfect for showering. Might not be good enough for drinking, so we don't want to contaminate the main tank. Perfect for showering. Fill up a bucket, fill up a jerry can, and use it for that. And while you're having a shower, it becomes shower water. I've got a water purification system in it, which is not only a filter, it's also um, ultraviolet light uh, to kill bacteria. And so I've even thought of that. But again, it's a system that is very small, very compact. It uh, doesn't take up a lot of space and, or electricity or anything like that and it's plumbed into the system and only the water that comes out the back goes through that system. There's one output for that system. So I know that when I'm running water through that, that thing, I can trick it. Everywhere else, I might not. There, I can. Uh, 
The modifications I have to do to get it right at this time, there are, are a fair amount. I still want to put an extra light or two and sort out some of the wiring of the lights. I haven't got to that point yet, but got far enough I can camp now. Um, there, I want to put a light bar on the front to give a little bit more. Uh, I've got very good range out of those lights, really good. But I have quite a dark area around, the, and I want to. I want something to, to fill that. I'm putting on a laser uh, light bar above the sun visor. Um, I love the way the wheels turned out. I love the look of it. Uh, the look of it. I, I really love the look of it. It's the best troop carrier I've ever made, and of all of the autograph troopies that I have built for clients I don't do that anymore um, this has actually turned out to be the best and I think it's bec also because I paid the most amount of attention to it the detail all the detail um, so I will be I mean even the mud flaps I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what the mud flaps are all about there actually is a guy in in trailer who's doing mud add on mud flaps for the troopy. I'll bring that all when I do the video and it'll be reasonably soon the detail of the video. I'll talk about those mud flaps. They're fantastic. lovely. They're great mud. They're not expensive. They fit onto the original mountings. Wonderful. Um, and my table, I haven't sorted out a few things. Where I'm going to put the table. I think I know where on top but how exactly I'm going to put the slider in. Not quite sure. Got a limited height with my garage roof so I've got to take consideration of that um, I want to do a table thing on the back door and that's why I want to do my induction cooking I haven't done a table on the cooking on the back door yet and I haven't I don't have a solution in mind for that at this moment um, it won't take long for me to do that but I do have time but I do want to do those before our big trip in June I don't actually have that much time to be honest with you because I've actually also got to do a lot of work on the Range Rover uh, to get it ready so I hope I, I can get all those things done. I'm now going to show you again. You want a shower? You might have a lot of people around. Watch this. <clears throat> See that water there? Whoa. Not a drop came out of there that was cold. That is. The temperature is perfect. Turn it on, you wait a few seconds, and ta-da! Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, Queen keeps on saying to me, don't forget to play the thing about the shop and all her... Queenie's running the shop, but our new t-shirts, I'm not wearing one of them today. She'll be cross with me that for that as well. Um, but check out, we've got some really nice merchandise. Particularly great Range Rover merchandise and the True Carrier merchandise is being done now. I'm actually been out taking pictures for it. Well, there you go. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching. 4X Overland is truly independent of sponsors and that means that our opinions, reviews and commentary cannot be influenced by commercial interests. Help us stay independent by joining our Patreon family now. Details in the video description.